Hello there. Uh, we're going to focus on the first page of the Unit 4 Genetics Review. So if you could pay attention to the first objective, which is to solve a simple dominance problem, I will go over these questions with you. So um, if you're having any trouble, first off, we're reading the bold parts here. Uh, it says, imagine that you are growing pea plants. In pea plants, purple flower color is dominant, keyword, over white flower color. And the first question asks us, what are the possible phenotypes? In order to answer this, which I'll zoom into a little bit more clearly, closely here. Um, you'll have to remember that phenotypes means physical trait. So I'm going to note that right here. And remember the pH and the pH should help you remember that. Pheno, physical, the physical trait. So your answer here should be the two physical traits we have, purple and white flowers. All right. Now after I tell you this part I want you to pause it, but for the second question, what are the possible genotypes of flowers. It's asking for the actual alleles or the quote unquote letters that stand for the trait. Okay. So you have to write all three possible and there are three. The first one would be whatever letter you choose, so I'm going to choose P, the homozygous dominant form, two dominant. The second form would be the heterozygous form, the word right, is right underneath it, heterozygous. And the last only uh, genotype would be the recessive. And if we we're trying to match those with their colors, uh, we have white, recessive, purple, heterozygous, carrying the white allele, and purple, dominant, big P, big P. Good. So now we know genotypes and phenotypes. Let's look at number three. It says a scientist crosses a homozygous dominant purple flower with a heterozygous purple flower. So we underline our parents. This is a plant one, so crossing, homozygous dominant purple, and heterozygous. And we think back to what we already knew, and we think about the letters. Homozygous dominant is two capital letters that are the same. So one parent is big P, big P. Crossed with, our X, the heterozygous purple. Heterozygous always, one big, one little. And we have our two parents. Now you can do your Punnett square from that. I'm not going to show you the Punnett square. Um, but in the end, you should be able to prove if there are any white offspring by re referencing back to which one was white. Um, do your Punnett square, see if there are any whites there, and write your answer out. All right, you can pause at any time, remember, to, uh, to write the rest of the answers. I'm going to move on to number four. Um, this one uh, goes off the screen a little bit here, but I'll read it to you. Human traits, it says sickle cell anemia is a recessive keyword disorder that impairs hemoglobin, a protein that transports oxygen in your bloodstream. We've seen this, we've talked about it, you've seen pictures of um, blood cells like this. They look kind of sickle-celled instead of the normal circle. Um, it says, show the cross of two individuals that are carriers. And I helped you out here. Carriers are heterozygous, another term for carriers. Carriers is used when the disorder is, if, if it's a disorder. So they're carrying that recessive disorder. Um, we call them heterozygous when they're carrying a, a, just a normal trait. But So what are the chances that they have a child with sickle cell? Let's set it up. They're both carriers, so with sickle cell we use A. They have one big, one little each. So those are the two parents. You can easily do a Punnett square here. I'm going to let you do that on your own, but remember, make your box. I'll just do this one for you. The rest of them will let you do. Put your one parent here, one parent here, one allele from each, and then do your Punnett square. Those two A's, big A little A here, big A little A here, and little a, little a. It says, what's the chance they have a child with sickle cell? Well, sickle cell is recessive from the question. We remember that recessive means too little when they're talking about disorder. It has to have both little to express the recessive. So the only one with sickle cell is this, 25% chance of having a sickle cell child, which leaves 75% for normal. The rest of them left. All right, let's switch it up here. Uh, number five, number uh, number five. I switched it up just a little bit. Um, this one is PKU. It's recessive as well, just like sickle cell. It's the same thing. Just change the letter to a P or a K. I'm going to use K because K is easier to see in the recessive condition. Um, but it's up to you. You can use P, K, whatever you want. Um, a man and a woman are both carriers of PKU. Show their potential offspring. So they're both carriers, which means they're both this big little big little 
Okay. Now, if the Ks are confusing you, you can use P. Um, but now you do the cross between them and show the offspring um, as percentages of PKU and normal. It should look very similar to the one above. So do that one out for me. Pause it and do that one out. And the last one, number six, based on your answer, it says, um, if you are a geneticist, someone who helps understand their genes inheritance, what advice would you give this man and woman? That's up to you. Based on their Punnett square, what would you tell them about the chances of being uh, having a kid with PKU, and then um, what advice would you give them? All right, so that's the first page. Hopefully you paused and learned a little bit along the way.